This podcast is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Spoiler warning for whatever is in the title of this episode. And now for the obligatory socials. Please like, share and subscribe. You can find the podcast on Twitter at HorrorPod69. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Slasher and Goodreads. Become part of the disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that the Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible and all other major podcast apps. Welcome to episode 95 of the Horror of Babylon, where we discuss The Exorcist, The Believer. Uh, I am Ryan, and with me as always is Daniel. Say hi, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. We're just so happy to be here tonight. This show is brought to you by our patrons, Abigail the First, Breaker of Chains, Mother of Dragons, and Logan, the, the full, full metal, metal patron, patron. And Ben, ben the, the fourth full. patron of hope. And Mia the fifth, the rainmaker. She makes it rain, yo. Oh, and thank you to Forestman Comics and Gaming, which you can visit at the Morgantown Mall in Morgantown, West Virginia, or the Mall at Robinson in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or you can shop online at shop.fourhorsemancomics.com. And actually, uh, Ronald the Third. Grampus of Christmas has gone missing. He went off into the woods to play with a little girl and <laughs> disappeared. It's it's been about three days. <laughs> so if anybody's seen him, uh, please please uh, contact West Virginia University uh, campus police. <laughs> I I have a small I have a small tangent. <laughs> okay. Okay. So when we went to the haunted house. Uh, about we were a little bit more than halfway through it and there's people and with flashlights like looking through and, and like they would like see us and they go hey we're we're looking for somebody you guys could just keep going mm -hmm. and when we get out of there there's like police everywhere well it turns out uh someone that was ahead of us had groped one of the uh, the actors in, oh in the uh in the thing so i get out of the haunted house and then the uh the other half of our group was behind us and they come out and they went god we thought for sure it was daniel who did it <laughs> And I was like, is that really the vibe I give off? God damn. No, you just you just talk a big talk. <laughs> yeah. I can't I can't imagine you ever actually assaulting anyone. I only sexually harass people who ask me to. Yeah, I mean if tie me up and throw me by the side you know, that's stupid. That's stupid. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, God damn guys. Tie me to the bed, sure, but it would have been one thing if they would have been playful, but I thought I, I'm pretty sure the person who said that was serious. Yeah, that that could be a little harmful. <laughs> yeah. No, I I know you wouldn't do that. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Trigger warning: uh, missing children, death of children, death of a spouse. Um, um, I have one. This is spoilers for the movie, but we're a spoiler podcast. Yeah. It is. They run a rape kit on two children. Yeah, that was uh, which was which was as close to being the uh, first Exorcist in terms of disturbing content. That was rough to watch. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like that. I mean, not that I wanted it out of the movie, but it was just very uncomfortable to watch. Yeah, uh, but that I I will say that, and you know me, I'm not that sensitive of a dude. But in terms of trigger warnings, that's the top of my list. Yeah, I was <laughs> I wasn't sure how to write that, yeah. so that's why I didn't have it listed. But yeah. yeah rape kit yeah, okay on, on two 12 year olds yeah that was that was rough i mean just that whole well, yeah, we'll that we'll whole get sequence in. yeah we'll get we'll that. get there this is obviously the first time we've uh seen this it's only been out seven days at time of recording so we're gonna instead of our history we'll, we'll talk about our expectations uh go ahead daniel okay so i first heard about this movie happening got it, it was a while ago and I think when I first heard about it, I heard it was going to be a remake, which I was totally against. But then I heard it was going to be more of like a, a soft reboot sequel. And I'm like, oh, OK, that's kind of what people do these days. Yeah. And I saw some of the posters and I was like, OK, I mean, it looks like 
the Exorcist. It just looks a little generic y Exorcist. I mean, honestly, the the girl, the Catherine on the poster, like, if I didn't know better, I would have said that was just Reagan. You know how many reviews I've watched where people say that? Like, it's just undeniable at this point. I think she was cast because she looks like Reagan. I actually never even saw that the second girl was on the poster <laughs> oh, yeah. until after I had seen the movie. Okay. I, I just never noticed, because actually, I think the the posters they have in theaters don't have the other the girl. The black girl. <laughs> I don't think they do, unless I'm just completely missed it. Um, I don't know. I'll look next time I'm in, but it looked generic, but not bad. Yeah. And then I saw the trailer, and I was like, that looks pretty bad. And uh, I did, was trying not to be negative, Mm -hmm. But, like, a bunch of things that are, like, personal red flags to me in terms of horror movies were all in that trailer. It's a Blumhouse movie. I like a lot of Blumhouse movies, but... I'd have to look at a list. Uh, I'll, I'll, S I'll... Sinister's at the top of the list. That's the only one I can think of that I like, but then I I couldn't just rattle off a Blumhouse movie, so... Yeah, but, I, like, uh... In the trailer where they have the little girl screaming the body in the blood and it's doing all these like bad edits and quick cuts to try mm -hmm. to be spooky and weird yeah and i'm like oh man you remember whenever uh reagan like slowly and subtly built up over the course of an hour and then and then shit hit the fan yeah and instead we just go like full possessed but i still went in uh, it was a date night movie my date ended up liking it i was not very thrilled with it uh to say the least but we'll get more into that I mean, I like The Exorcist. I think I've come to kind of settle that I really like the original book and the original movie and then have middling opinions about most of the rest of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still, it's one of the better horror things for me, but so I was kind of excited. I actually thought the idea of a remake didn't sound too horrific. Like, it, my thing about remakes is even if they're bad, it's whatever, we still have the original. Mm -hmm. But then... I saw the trailer, and it was just like, this looks awful. And I shouldn't judge a movie by a trailer, but you do. And so I was trying to go in with an open mind. Uh, you went on a date, so I went and saw it by myself. I saw it last night, which was the, the Thursday after release. So that was like day six or seven or whatever. And our, our local theater, it, it's a very old theater, but it has like four, I think it's eight screens. It, it is eight screens. And it has four that are like modern and have like stadium seating. And then it has two or three that are like half stadium seating and half like old school movie seating with like a very small screen. Mm -hmm. And it has one way in the back that's just like utterly shitty. And I hate seeing movies back there. And so I got my ticket and they said, you're in theater five. And I'm like, oh God, this movie's been out a week and it's already in one of the back theaters. Wow. Mine was like in like the, the nice one. Yeah. So I, I'm walking back there and I'm like, that's a bad sign. And, but surprise, surprise, they actually have halfway renovated some of those back oh, ones. Oh, okay. The, not the stadium seating, but the floor seating mm -hmm. has leather reclining theater seats. Okay. So I was like, okay. So, um, but then there were only like, there were, I think there were eight, eight or 10 people in the entire theater. Uh, granted, it was a Thursday night. <laughs> But still, just the second weekend. And I think it was also, it was the release night of the Taylor Swift concert movie. Oh, yeah, that's going to... The, the movie was all, already underperforming, but the Taylor Swift movie is going to hurt. It, it, so. it was actually, its release was moved up one week mm -hmm. to not compete with the Taylor Swift movie as much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I also did not like the movie, um, but we will, we will get into specifics because there are... Specific and I there, there are specific and there is also things I liked about this movie, so it's not going to be totally negative. The vampires are pure myth, superstition. I may be able to bring you proof that the superstition of yesterday can become the scientific reality of today. Let's jump into background. This is a sequel to the exorcist it was released october 6th and another thing i, I read this today and i i'm wondering if this sh doesn't show confidence in the movie or a lot of movies do this and i just don't realize it 
The digital release for this movie is coming on October 24th, which is 18 days after the theatrical release. Okay, so I follow like a lot of movie Twitter mm -hmm. and they talk about it. And even though digital release and ta like releases happen a lot quicker now, mm -hmm. this is already considered like, this is still considered bad. Yeah, I, I thought that seemed very fast. Yeah, this is quicker than Blue Beetle went to digital. So yeah, that that's bad. It supposedly is going to be the first of a new trilogy and the Exorcist Deceiver has been announced and scheduled for April of 2025. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. It's probably going to get made. They are talking about the director being changed. I, I'd be pro that. Speaking of which, writer, director, from the man who brought you Pineapple Express, David Gordon Green. <laughs> and the Halloween, the last Halloween trilogy. Yeah. So this movie had a budget of $30 million, And as of 10-11, which is five days after release, it had taken in $57 million, So it probably won't, will not be a total bomb. Um, it hasn't, that means it hasn't broken evil, even yet. Yeah, but that's only six days after release. Yeah. I, uh... You you also got to consider that I don't know if you know this. Uh, Blumhouse paid four hundred million dollars for the rights of the franchise. I read that Peacock paid them for the distribution rights for the di that much for the distribution for the digital. I saw that on the wiki. Universal collaborated with Peacock to acquire distribution rights. Yeah. For four hundred. Okay. Yeah, that's Blumhouse didn't pay that. Okay, well then that's smarter on Blumhouse. Yeah. <laughs> that's dumb on them. Yeah. Whoever paid the four hundred million dollars are stupid. Yeah, they got to get the distri the distribution rights, meaning that Universal could release it theatrically and Peacock could release it digitally. Yeah. So I, I don't I do not think this movie will be a financial failure, but I obviously I it's not gonna be like the powerhouse that the original Exorcist, or any of the sequels were. I think it's going to be a financial failure. I think that it's going to be just in the green, and just in the green is usually considered a failure. Well, I mean, they're almost in the green after five days. Yeah, but now you got the Taylor Swift movie that's released this week. Yeah, but those and, are also two different audiences. I mean, it moved away from it. It was that, it was afraid enough to change its weekend. I get. I mean, we'll see. I don't. I don't root for movies to fail, except maybe this movie. I don't. I don't root for any movies to fail ever, because what you have to keep in mind is that even though you don't like it, mm -hmm. you're when you're rooting for a movie to fail, you're essentially rooting for people to lose their jobs, to lose their income, and that's that's ugh. who lo who loses their income. The people who would be hired to make the second one. Oh, okay. All right. I don't think they deserve to make a second one, so. Okay, maybe the, the producer doesn't, but what about the makeup people? What about the camera people? What about the people who get coffee? What about the background actors? What about I, the... There's other movies for all of them to work on. It, the, the people who are most hurt by this are the directors and the actors. So you're just saying they can just get another job like that? I, I think that they will have uh, just an easy time of it, yes. I don't, I don't think it's that hard. You don't think it's that hard to just get another job on a movie? Not in this industry, no. A lot, a lot of this I find to be very insular. People fail upwards in Hollywood all the time, in including makeup people and uh, catering people. Okay. Yeah. I just... Okay. All right. Uh, bombed with critics. Yep. Yep. Uh, also bombed with audiences. Yeah, all I did was read the wiki, so I have no idea. I, w I would imagine that's very true. I've watched 30 YouTube reviews at this point, and not a single one has liked it. I don't want to watch one YouTube review of this. I don't even want to watch ours. And that's that. Another story in the classic, infallible three-act structure. Good enough for Aristotle, good enough for The Simpsons. Mr. Sislak, I have a feeling there's going to be one more act to this story. Well, I'm not hanging around for that. Four rags. Structure and themes. Uh, what are some similar themes in this movie to previous Exorcist stories? Uh, possession. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, a parent struggling to take care of their child who has an issue that they they can't explain. <laughs> um, going I, going outside of your belief system to find a, a resolution for your child's issue. Um. 
Yeah, I mean, it has almost all the same themes. They're just done worse. Yeah, I think kind of my main... I, I, I really have, like, two huge issues. Uh, one, I'll, one I'll wait on. Uh, the other... The, my main thing is there was really no process from the girls being recovered or being found to them being possessed. You had like one, the one scene with Angela and her dad where mm -hmm. she like pisses the bed and like attacks him. And yeah. that, that was really it. And that was it. But the main strength of both the exorcist novel and the exorcist film to me it, the film doesn't do it as well as the book, but it, it still does it pretty well, is the the process of investigating Reagan's issue and going through the medical realm and then going through the psychiatric realm and then eventually going to the spiritual realm and consulting a doctor and then consulting a psychiatrist and then consulting a priest and really just like... It, the way this movie was structured, there wasn't really any room to do all that, but... I would have it I it wasn't as good because of that. Yeah. And it's just it went from like 0 to 60 just way too fast for me from it the the beginning was very strong. Then we later I can talk about specific reasons why I thought it was. Mm -hmm. But from where the point where for me where it started to kind of fall apart is where they took the girls home. And then just all of a sudden, they're both like Reagan at level 10. There was no pro there was no descent, no process from I'm a little possessed to I'm super possessed. Yeah, I think my biggest issue with this movie was the best parts were when the girls were missing and when they were first found. And if you're already planning it as a trilogy, I probably would have just made the first movie focus on that with like some weird supernatural stuff like maybe in the background. I don't know what I would have changed, but uh, it, it goes from zero to 30 in like the space of a scene. I'm not gonna try and explain how it could be fixed because I don't know. Yeah. Uh, all I can tell you is I didn't like it and this is why I didn't like it. Okay, so some new themes, um, obviously like various uh, worldviews, various faiths, various exorcism techniques um it put a focus on the family taking responsibility and performing the ex exorcism as opposed to the priest doing it which as far as i'm aware has been every other exorcist movie i i i have some things to say on that but i'll have to wait for characters i have positives and negatives on that me too i like i like the idea but i think it I, I like i like the idea my issue is with a is that this movie was trying to make a certain point and then made the exact opposite point and i don't think it did so to be smart i think it did so because the script was written poorly i i don't know what you're talking about so i guess we'll find out in characters yeah Okay, uh, is so I haven't seen Dominion, and I don't remember The Exorcist, the beginning. Is this the first one where the person who is exorcist... Is this the first one where the person who is possessed dies? No, that happens in... Uh, I can't remember if it's the beginning or Dominion. Okay. is In one of those, it's an adult woman who's actually possessed, and she was kind of framing a child as being possessed. Mm-hmm which is sort of like the twist of that movie mm -hmm. and then after she's exercised her body just is into like a dire of a state and she dies okay. and then Marin escapes okay but they this is the first if this they didn't kill a kid this is the first one where they like killed the kid yeah. yeah okay well killed a kid a kid they're coming to get you barbara characters and i kind of have them in four groups i got the fieldings the white folks the they don't have a last name they didn't give them a last name. That that explains a lot because they were barely characters. Yeah. Uh, the other exorcists and then the legacy characters. So let's talk about the Fieldings, uh, which I think is, is this movie's strength. Victor Fielding, uh, played by Leslie Autumn Jr., who 
I loved him in Murder on the Orient Express. I really like this guy. I think he's a great actor. I can't think of anything else I've seen him in. That's the only other thing I've seen him in. Well, just great in this movie. I thought he and his story and his relationship with his daughter was kind of the highlight. Uh, yeah, they should have been the only... They, they shouldn't have had the white family in here. Yeah. Uh, you you remember when we were reviewing uh, Legion and I told you the story about how they wanted to have the two daughters of Reagan possessed? Yeah. Double the exorcist. Now imagine if you had to split up the children between two families and only gave one of the family screen time so you don't even give a fuck about the other family. Yeah, it wasn't great. Yeah. Uh, these two, I thought, did a pretty... Actually, I think both the girls did a fantastic I thought job. both the girls were... A, it, 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 all of my criticisms aside, I think the girls did a good job. Yeah, and, and honestly, I don't know that there's a performance in this movie that I, I particularly didn't like, but... Um, yeah, no, this is... Strangely, a bunch of my opinions of Prometheus leak into this film. A lot of it has to do with the writing mm -hmm. of the themes. No, not the themes themselves, but the, the characters literally turning to the camera going, these are the themes of the movie. I'm going to exposit them now for five minutes. But when it comes to like the performances, uh, Victor was great. He, um, I like the opening with him. I like the like opening in Haiti. So, the easiest way to get me in invested in a movie is to play like the dad daughter card. Yeah, that's the easiest way to get me invested. And I, I thought the first thirty minutes between the earthquake, him having to make the choice between his wife and his daughter, super good. And then, and then just, you know, like 10 minutes of establishing that he's kind of a helicopter dad, but they're happy. Yeah. Though I do have something to say on that. Okay. Um, I told you that I watched 30 reviews. I accidentally, I didn't read the review, but like just scrolling through right before I see the movie, a review pops into one of my timelines. Mm -hmm. And it goes, why the exorcist believer and its uh, pro-life themes fail? And I was like, or it's pro-life messaging fails. And I was I like, didn't get that at all. I was like, it's pro what now? <laughs> I didn't get that at all. So I had, I went into the movie going, I, I need to look for this. And I'm like, is it because he, is it because he, like the choice he had to make at the beginning or? I, I guess. Yeah, I was like, uh, that's one of those ones where I felt like someone was looking for something to be pissed off about. That was like the article I read. <laughs> Where that was talking about how the creators of Paw Patrol are are Trump supporters. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, I was I was literally looking for it during my first viewing because I was like I was so taken aback, and th you have like the 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 one ex nun who gets her like had an abortion, mm -hmm. but they don't frame that as a bad thing. They just frame it as something that was in her past. Yeah, it was something. Like, maybe she regretted it, maybe she didn't, but it wasn't like, it was bad because I had an abortion. It was bad because she didn't have her baby. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It, it was just something that the demon mocked her for. Of course a demon's going to mock you for it. Yeah. A demon would mock you if you kept it. No, I didn't I didn't pick up on any of that. Yeah. Uh, but I, I didn't know where else to bring that up, so I, I just thought of it now. That's so. fine. <laughs> um, and then obviously, like, the girls disappearing... And then, like the the str hit him coming home, finding she's not there. That panic, the the confrontation with the other parents and the police, like all of that. That was so good. That was, <laughs> I would say, like the first like 30, 40 minutes, are very, very effective and very good. And I was I was kind of riding high because I was kind of like, oh, I thought this movie was gonna be so shitty, but this is so good. You could have almost played the supernatural elements as like not actually real mm -hmm. and just girls going through trauma and like you have to question whether it's supernatural or not and the movie would have been a hundred times better for it yeah uh i i think that's true okay so let's let's pull the uh the white folks into this so just quickly the the mom is played by jennifer nettles the dad is played by norbert leo butts and in her first butts. In her first film, Catherine is played by Olivia O'Neill. First movie, I thought she did a great job. She did do a good job. Yeah. Um, I, I do think that the church scene was just as corny as the uh, trailer, but that's mm -hmm. not the little girl's fault. That's the script's no. fault. No. I I thought both girls did a good job it, with what they had to work with. Yeah. Uh, I, 
uh, of everybody that I do want to see continue in the industry, it's the two girls at the top of the list and yeah. Victor in third. Yeah. Uh, the actors. Yeah. They, them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they all did. They all did a pretty good job. And even like the mom and the dad, well, the mom, not so much, but the dad really pissed me off for, yeah, obviously we'll get into that. And it's not so much that they themselves were bad. It's just that the characters didn't really need to be there. Like you said. They didn't need to be there, and they almost existed to just be a, hey, how about we poke some fun at the white evangelical stereotypes? Yeah. They weren't, they were caricatures, they weren't characters. Yeah, which is true of, like, almost every character in this movie, except for Victor and Angela. Um, yeah. And even, like, Angela doesn't very well, she's a, she's a girl who never got to know her mom, that's basically her whole character, but... yeah. It's which I'm sure is hard. It's yeah, just, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm but that, gonna... but it's a one, it's a one note. Yeah. Now she carries that note very well. She does. But uh, and speaking of one note characters, now I, I like I like the idea that the church denies them. And honestly, I think that this was supposed to be modern day. Mm -hmm. And I honestly do think that the 1970s Catholic Church would Earth. be would be more likely to approve an exorcism versus a Catholic church in 2023. I agree. Um, I've heard a lot of people compare this to an Avengers Assemble moment where people are like, oh, we got to get the team together to unpossess these girls and people keep comparing it. And I haven't seen Repossessed. Mm -hmm. But apparently in Repossessed, they literally call the religious leaders from all over the world to fight the demon at the end. I, I would... I. I I don't think so just because like if there would have been like a rabbi and if there would have been like a Buddhist monk and if there would have been like a then maybe but like because I mean they do have people from different faith but they're not like if you had to pick five that were going to appear in this movie you probably wouldn't have said like uh I'm not even sure like the appropriate terms to call some of these so uh, one of them was like a Haitian voodoo Christian mix. Yeah, and it was, but she, it was also, like, American slave, like, herbology, yeah, and like, it, it traditional was, medicine. Uh, I, I wish I knew if this was, I'm sure it's a real thing, but I wish I knew uh, the real terms. Yeah, I actually meant to look it up, and of course, I didn't. I just don't care enough to. I mean, this, I'm, this, I'm kind of interested, but... Th this movie didn't invite my curiosity enough. I almost wish that she would have been the only exorcist. Well, then you've got also the evangelical pastor. Who does he, nothing. Who, he yelled. <laughs> he yelled, yeah. He, he yelled. Uh, he's, and then the, the Catholic priest, and then the Catholic woman who has to take over for the Catholic priest when he bitches out. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're almost getting to the point I want to make. We're almost right, there. Go. Right. No, we, got, we got a couple more to get through. Okay. Uh, uh, and then you, the neighbor who is a guy. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, he shows up. He ties I, them down. The one that I liked was the nurse, the the woman who's, and I did. I didn't even realize right away that they were the same character. But you the, the meet, neighbor. Yeah. You meet her when she's yelling at them about not putting their garbage, uh, fr taking it off the sidewalk. Saint Augustine scooped out like a pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, I actually I liked that character. Uh, I I I liked her until I didn't like any of them. <laughs> So okay. Uh, as the movie progressed, I liked each character less. It wasn't so much the characters themselves for me as it was just the the movie as a whole, the script as a whole. It wasn't like any one thing that those characters did. I just I didn't like the decisions that the movie was making. Yep. Um, okay, so legacy characters. Chris and Reagan McNeil return. Uh, Reagan is is just a, a cameo. A cameo at the end, which I have mixed feelings about Chris McNeil, but I I do not. I think that I appreciate that they added Reagan right at the end because because why not? If you're why not? It felt like a why not to me. Um, uh, I think Chris is the worst written character in this movie, and I think that she is the most easily written out character. Uh, her existence is almost completely unnecessary to the plot other than exorcist exists, which could have been explained by literally anyone. I guess she kind of wakes Victor up and like get, 
gets him out of bed. She's like the what gets him motivated to actually do something. Yeah, but that that same thing could have been a. It didn't need to be Chris, is what I'm saying. Like it is Chris, but it's only Chris so we can point at it and go, "Hey, we remember that's nostalgia." I'm fine with that. I, I'm not. I, I'm I'm so sick of that as a a cheap tactic in storytelling in modern Hollywood. I can t- I can deal with it for a little bit longer. Um, I think she. I, I know you don't mind the patriarchy line. I think I, no, it wasn't that I didn't mind it. I liked it. I thought it was hilarious. I think that that is pure character assassination <laughs> for both her <laughs> and and Karis and Marin. Uh, and now I will get into my little mini rant. So Chris, Chris McNeil, she 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 looks at our main character here and goes, "I don't think I was invited because uh, I wasn't part of their little patriarchy." <laughs> Which, no, you weren't invited because you weren't an exorcist. You purposely went out and sought out these men, crying into their shoulders because everything else failed you. Both of these men died in your house to save your daughter, and you're going to equate their legacy to the patriarchy. And then this movie goes on to have a bunch of non-exorcists in the room. And what happens? A priest dies and a little girl dies because they have people who don't know what they're doing trying to do what the two priests did. Well, I don't think it would have turned out any differently if the Catholic priest did it by himself. I think if it would have been a focused exorcist by people who had performed exorcisms, like in the original movie, then maybe just the priest would have died. Yeah, but there wasn't a character like that. And then the little girl probably wouldn't have died. I'm saying that this movie framed it as, oh, if only I would have been allowed in the room, where then the final scene goes against that very message. If she spits on the grave of the two men who saved her daughter's life, fuck Chris McNeil in this movie. I don't think it was a message. I just think it was a joke. It was a bad joke. It was a funny joke for me. Yeah. Um, I think... I don't think that was the intent of the writers. I think it was just a joke and you just, that's your, that's how you took it. it of course, we don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I just know that that seems to be the common consensus. Like nobody's happy with it. I am. Okay, you're happy with it. And right. the girl the girl in front of me laughed too. <laughs> okay. We, it, but it was, to be fair, it was not the funniest joke in the movie. It was the second funniest joke in the movie. What was the funniest joke? Y'all need to get some sleep. Okay, that was pretty funny. I thought you were going to say the abortion joke. <laughs> well, it wasn't much of a joke. It wasn't really a joke. <laughs> but I, I laughed at that scene. I think I only laughed the two times. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, uh, Linda Blair shows up. Which was fine. Now, I can't remember where I read this. I also read that the demon wasn't supposed to be Pazuzu, but Chris recognizes the demon. She says, he knows me, is what she says. Okay. So it recognized her, which I guess maybe Pazuzu was like, hey, watch out for these McNeil girls. They're bad news. Okay. Because I, uh, I can't remember the name of the demon, but I remember reading in like one of those like pre-release materials that it wasn't Pazuzu. I was thinking that it wasn't, but obviously it's not definitive. Yeah. Or at least if you only take what's in the movie. It's not named in the movie, so. Yeah. And it's not named in the original Exorcist, which this is like, that's the only one that this takes into consideration. Mm-hmm. They show a statue of Pazuzu, but they never name him. Yeah. And it doesn't... It doesn't do anything to retcon Exorcist 2 or Exorcist 3, but it uh, it just doesn't take them into consideration. Yeah, it just it doesn't talk about them. Um, I'd be almost interested to see if they tried to include those in future ones. Oh, they probably put, not. They should put James Earl Jones in to see for I'll go see it then. <laughs> I don't know if I want to see Deceiver at all. <laughs> Not even if James Earl Jones is in it. I mean, sure, but... <laughs> I, I I will say that right now... That dude has Star Wars residuals. If uh, if Deceiver came out, like, like let's say next year, I wouldn't go see it. I... Probably the only... In 2025, 
if we're still doing the podcast and if we were doing an episode on it, maybe. But I may also say, no, let's just not do an episode on it. Let's just do something we like this to this year. Or, or <laughs> let's wait and see what the trailer looks like. Let's wait and see who the director is. Let's see who wrote it. Let's yeah. Let's see the direction they're taking. Let's not commit to doing an episode before. I'll kill you all. <laughs> I'll drive you crazy and I'll kill you all. I'm every nightmare you ever had. I am your worst dream come true. I'm everything you ever were afraid of. Scary shit. Was this movie scary? Kinda. Okay, like the first hour is super scary. Yeah. And it's like real scary, like yeah. real world scary. Yeah. And then even like the very small bridge we get between like real possession and the girls coming home, like when they're showing the demon in the background, like very briefly. Mm hmm. I was like, oh, that that almost that kind of got me. I was I was gonna ask you, because uh, I was like, he's either gonna love that or hate that. I I loved it. My only problem is is, and this isn't fair to it, mm -hmm. is by now I've seen that same scare done so many times. Like they mm -hmm. did it not. It's obviously a nod to the original. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> but in, in, it was much more. It was Instead of just a face, it was much more detailed. Yeah, it was uh, done in Insidious. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen that in forever. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay. But I was still like, oh, that's... And it didn't do like the big jump scary noise when it did it. It was just there. I was like, oh, fuck. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I wish you could have heard Mar Molly scream. <laughs> she screamed so loud at movies. Nobody screamed once in <laughs> the theater I was in. I... T I <laughs> That this girl will scream over anything. <laughs> she gets scared so easy. I mean, I like th that. That's fun. Like, I wish I was more like that. Yeah, I, I. And it does make movie going experiences a lot more enjoyable when I go with her. Like, Saw Ten was so much fun because I was watching it with her. Scream was so much fun because I was watching it with her. She almost made me like this movie. Uh, I tried to get Emma to go with me, and then I was really, really, really glad, glad that she didn't. Oh my! God. I should have warned. I didn't think you were gonna make that offer. I would have warned you. I mean, there was no realistic situation where she would have said yes. Yeah. But I just, <laughs> I don't mind going to movies by myself. In fact, I, I kind of like going to movies by myself. But I'll always like make an attempt to get someone else to go. I either like to be by myself on a date or with a group. Mm-hmm. You know, like... Just not with only Ryan, because that sucks. I wouldn't say it sucks. I would say that a lot of times, me and you walk out of the theater, we go, all right, we'll see you. Well, I'll see you in a little bit. Yeah. You know, but when we have a group, like, there's, like, some a little bit of a reaction. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, there's, like, five people want to go to FNAF with us now. Whatever. Sure. So. I don't care. <laughs> not like it'll spoil your time. Oh, I did see the new FNAF trailer before this. <laughs> yeah. And it was... Like, okay, whatever. <laughs> like, I'm in. I'm doing it. I I think it looks ridiculous, but it looks like it might be fun ridiculous. I'm hoping that this, even though I don't care about the story or the characters, I'm hoping that the, the subject matter is just so much more inclined towards being a movie than a novel that it being a movie will help me enjoy it more. I, I also think that like getting to see the animatronics because it's all practical effects. Ooh. I do think that. Uh, but in the new trailer, you saw the one with the cupcake, right, where it attacks the dude. It was cool. I was like, okay. I, so that's the tone we're going for when I saw that trailer. Like, I mean, if it's like that, but like maybe kicked up a little bit. Like, I know it's PG thirteen, so it's not going to be super bad. But yeah, but it could be fun. Yeah. I we'll see. Uh, if you're PG-13, you're allowed exactly one fuck, and people are like, oh, I wonder where the fuck is. I'm like, you can see it in the trailer when she says, what the heck? She's mm -hmm. clearly saying fuck. Yeah. And I'm like, how is nobody else saying that? Can no one else read lips? Yeah, all the Star Wars podcasts and Lord of the Rings podcasts always play the game like, where would you put fuck in episode three or the two towers? Where would you put fuck? Where would you put fuck in episode three? Pat You're breaking my fucking heart. I would have, I would have just had Pat like uh, uh, Obi Wan tells uh, Padme that he's killing younglings, and she just goes fucking young. Yeah. Oh, and she just goes fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that That's would be great. mine. That's great. I don't have one for the two towers. I'd have to rewatch. I, I mean, they do it for for all of them. Yeah, I'd yeah. have to rewatch like the director's cut of the two towers. Um, maybe when uh. They're in the uh, they're they're in the tower. I like 
in, in, in Helm's Deep, they're in the tower, and the orcs are like, uh, the uruk are, are pounding on the doors, and they've like lost the battle, and uh, Aragorn looks at Theoden, the king of Rohan, mm-hmm. and he, he's trying to get him to, to like show some balls, and he says, will you ride out with me? Will you fucking ride out with me? I would, uh, I like uh, when Gimli and the elf, like, like us, uh, uh, never thought I'd die next to a fucking elf. <laughs> <laughs> How about a fucking friend? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> okay, um, effects, I didn't particularly, I, the, effect, the effects were fine. Overall, I thought the production was fine. Um, the only criticism I've seen is like when they got like the fart gas out of the girls and like she spits in the fireplace. And I was like, that's one of the criticisms. I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't. I, it I doesn't don't. bother me. That, uh, that didn't bother me either. Um, there was no like horrifically bad CG that took me out of it. Yeah. Uh, it was very, it, compared to the first Exorcist, and this is just how movies are made now, it's a lot more bombastic. Yeah. And I was expecting it to be. Yeah. I mean, that's just how horror movies are these days. Yeah, so. They don't make them like they used to. <sighs> I would like something like in between what we have now and what we had then. Yeah. I think that's where the happy median is. The power of Christ compels you! The The power power of Christ Christ compels you! So let's go to the power of Christ compels you. And this is also another thing that I didn't like that I haven't really brought up yet. So are we supposed to believe that they literally went to hell for those three days where... Because that, that's what the mom says. She she says that, do you know where Jesus went the three days he was gone? He went to hell to to, to proclaim his the, his authority. authority. And, and she so she thinks that because the girl's feet are all fucked up, that they disappeared and went to hell for three days. I, I think that was. OK, so how I took it was they want to paint the the white evangelical lady as a little out of it but but at their the same feet time, are, their feet are fucked up and i'm not saying we need an explanation for what happened to their feet i just but, th- i just think they're fucked up because they walked for 30 miles over three days yeah but if you I mean, walk if you walk 30 miles barefoot that'll fuck your feet up i feel like if you were just walking for three days, you'd walk longer than 30. Maybe not two girl, two like young girls. Yeah, especially if they're like in a possessed trance and they don't know what they're doing. And also, but, but at the same time, I'm like, if they went to hell, it would explain why they weren't found. Yeah, because they did. They had search par- parties through the woods. I, I don't I, I like that. It's not completely explained, but I wished that that like explanation wasn't mentioned because yeah. it just it kind of, it also kind because the mythology behind Pazuzu in the previous movies is all very pagan, and this, it kind of if they went to like hell, it makes it like very Christian, which I mean, tomato tomato, it's two different the same thing in two different worldviews, but it's weird. You you could almost do it if you went with like a Old Testament. Uh... Not Old Testament, like Old World uh, Judaism, which uh, some historians have posited was actually polytheistic, but uh, only worshipped one god. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like you should, like when Yahweh says, "You shall have no other gods before me," he meant that literally. Like there are other gods, but I'm the only one that matters. Ah! Oh my God! Are you Stephen King? No, I'm Dean Koontz. Oh. Uh, Kings and Koontz. Uh, my king is real easy. It's uh, it's Victor and his daughter. Their story. Uh, that's their also my king. Yeah. And my Koontz is they killed that fucking girl. Uh, my Koontz is Chris McNeil. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, rankings. I did mine. It's pretty low, but I'll let you do yours. I'm gonna like shield my because I don't want to see where yours is. I don't want to be influenced. Mm. <laughs> yeah, right. I, don't, I don't think it's gonna matter. But <laughs> yeah, okay. Here's the bottom half of your list. Okay, I guess I'm assuming. Oh no! All right, okay, so I'm gonna start up here with the Exorcist Two Heretic, which I need to apologize to. Yeah, it's definitely a better movie. 
Okay, I think I like this more than Near Dark, only because Near Dark I found super boring. I think I'm putting it below Alien Resurrection. Uh, I think I had it even lower than you. All right, so you have it as your new number 72, below Alien Resurrection and above Horns. I have it as my new number 74, below Alien 3 and above Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. Uh, the thing, the joke recently has been, at least they didn't kill Newt. But, <laughs> but they, they, they did kill a little girl. They, so. ki they killed New Reagan. <laughs> yeah, so. And uh, no, did I like her as much as Newt? No, they but still. They didn't just kill her. They literally dragged her soul to hell on screen. Yeah, I was, I was not happy. God played a trick on you. I was so pissed at that dad. I was like, dude, dude. You know what could have almost made that work? is if they would have actually characterized those characters and made us like sympathize with them on some level. I, I still wouldn't have liked, I just, I, I don't like that they killed her. It doesn't matter if the characters were good or the characters. I I would have preferred that both girls lived. Don't, yeah. It, it's different from like Gage dying because Gage dying feeds the story because the story is about how the different people react to his death. I, yeah, and I don't mind when a kid dies in a story. Mm -hmm. You know what I do mind is immediately after a kid dies, you have the ex-nun giving exposition to happy music, explaining the themes of the movie. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this isn't a happy ending. Why mm -hmm. are you playing music like this? Why are you framing the story like this? And why are you explaining your obvious themes to me? And they they ended with the that girl's mom and dad, like like he's sitting there with his cup of coffee being sad and she like walks in and looks at him like oh, oh they're gonna make it they're gonna heal like no I would divorce his ass yeah you, exactly like nothing about what just happened it would have been almost better if they would have just ended it on a very dark and somber note leading into the next movie yeah but again I don't know how I would fix this movie I, I would I, have to do like a whole rewrite on yeah. the second half I don't know. I'm just not happy with it at all. Yeah. The, the, that latter, the latter part, both the exorcism and them killing the girl and how they actually ended the movie with it being like, not like a somber, happy ending. Like, like it, it's not cool. I didn't like it. Homework. Uh, if you were one of the not exorcist exorcists invited to this exorcism, what element would you add to the circle? Like if it w if it was me or if I could like put one in the script. You. What would I add? Okay, I guess I would show up with a bunch of tape recorders trying to get ghost voices on. I don't know what I would help with. Uh, so <laughs> I would I would come in with the power of dad jokes, <laughs> and I would I would throw water in their face and be like, "Oh, you girls are having a devil of a time with this exorcism." <laughs> oh, the demon would leave. Right? <laughs> <laughs> even be like no <laughs> uh, and our question for the listeners the name game violence edition battle continues uh, we mentioned in our last bonus episode this week we are talking about Matthew Perry the actor from that show uh, that everybody likes whatever it's called you know the one that everybody likes uh, versus oh, I thought you were gonna uh, from um, Almost Heroes yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, that's my favorite Matthew Perry thing, but uh, or, or Seventeen again. That's yeah, that's the one I'm thinking because yeah. of all the Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one too. Um, or uh, versus historical figure Commodore Matthew Perry. Uh, if you have an opinion, you can comment on this episode. You can comment on our our bonus episode from Thursday, or there is a short TikTok reel. Do you think they're related? I doubt it. <laughs> I mean, Perry's kind of a a pretty common middle or last name so okay yeah i'm kind of disappointed <laughs> did you see the like terrible picture i used of matthew perry yeah. first <laughs> i was kind of mean but whatever like no i like it <laughs> it's an awful picture of him uh not a, he's not a bad looking guy but it's just a really bad picture um okay yeah so comment on that if you feel like it uh for further reading what are some other than sinister what are some good blumhouse movies I can get a list. Yeah, give me a list. Okay, list of Blumhouse horror movies. I, know, I think the they did the Black Sun, but I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, I, I want to see that. Okay, in the 2000s, they did all these. I've not seen any of them. Um, 
I hate Paranormal Activity, but a lot of people think it's really good. Okay, Sinister. I like Sinister. Um, I haven't seen. Oh, was Insidi Insidious chapter? Oh, in Insidious, Sinister and Insidious. I like those two. Okay. So far, those are the only ones I've Oculus seen. Oculus is really good. Mercy was really bad. Okay, but it was Mercy. it was kind of funny bad. Yeah. It's based on a Stephen King short story, and it uh, stars the kid who plays Coral in Walking Dead. Ouija was really bad. Um, Insidious Chapter 3 was pretty good. Sinister 2 was... Green Inferno was, was not good. good. I like Green Inferno. And Sinister, Sinister 2 was not good. Jim and the Holograms? Okay. Okay. I didn't know that. Hush is good. I... I haven't seen a lot of these. Benji? Benji? <laughs> Apparently they do more than just horror movies. Yeah, they do They do a lot. Okay. They're, they're like known for their horror movies. Us, um, us was alright. I liked Us. Ma, I have mixed feelings on. Overall, I think you'd probably like it. I liked it, but... I just... I just thought it looked funny. That's the black box. That's the name of the porno I started. in. The black box is the pirate's death sentence. Firestarter. Yeah, that wasn't it wasn't great. They them. <laughs> uh. Hey, do you know how uh, non-binary samurais kill people? Uh, they slash them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, I mean, there's a couple. I like Insidious and Sinister, but granted, I, I only saw, like, we went through their entire list, and I've seen, like, four or five. I still haven't even seen Megan, which apparently is decent. Apparently, they have announced a sequel, Megan 2.0. I mean, yeah, it made, like, Buku's money. Yeah. Okay, so their upcoming movies are Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, Night Swim, the, t the trailer for that looks so bad. I wanted to ask, what's the over-under? Like, what do you think is going to be worse? Five Nights at Freddy's the movie or Exorcist? Exorcist. Ex <laughs> okay. Because even if, like, Five Nights is Freddy at Freddy's is bad, it's extremely unlikely that I will be mad about it. Yeah. All the kids are already dead. <laughs> yeah. So I, so I was watching that new trailer, mm -hmm. and it seemed weird to me. But I'm not in the I'm not in the fan base. Okay. It seemed weird to me that they explain that in the trailer that Freddy and the others are haunted by the ghosts of dead children. I feel like I feel like that's for general audiences. Well, I would think that that wouldn't like be a twist, but it'd be like something that you find out later in the movie. Yeah, that's not something I would have advertised. Yeah, but I also feel like it's so well known in the community. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's the thing. It's like, it's just... It, it's like the first thing you learn is they're actually haunted by children. Okay, that's fine. All right, um, do we have anything else in this? Crap, I don't think so. All right, upcoming on the Horror of Babylon, our last two regular Sunday episodes for season two. Uh, this coming Sunday, October 22nd, we are reviewing the third and final novel in the Silver Eyes trilogy, Five Nights at Freddy's The Fourth Closet. And then the Sunday, the 29th, we will be reviewing the film, Five Nights at Freddy's. And then our first Sunday episode for season three will be a kickoff on 11-5, where we revisit The Stand. That'll be our first novel for season three. We are going to do the whole thing in one episode. We're not breaking yeah, it up. So, so it's not going to be as uh, structured. It's going to be a very high level thing. And honestly, Hef is going to be there. So it's going to be mostly like... Let Hef talk. Let Hef talk. And then here's my thoughts on a second read. This is how it's it's different for me. Here's Daniel Fanboy and Groover Herald for a third time. Yeah. And I, I've started it. I'm, I have also started it. And... I don't know if I'm enjoying it more because it's a second read or I'm enjoying it more because book one is really good. But um, book one is really good. But I, I also, I liked book one and book two a lot. It's book three where it kind of... So I, I'm thinking that I'm going to be easier on book three because just because I know what happens. Yeah. Yeah. But I, we'll I, see. Th I think once you make your peace with it, mm -hmm. you can enjoy the journey And it's more. been, it's been two years. Yeah. So, like it's... Because we kind of... 
read that and then we just immediately reviewed it. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. And then our next three bonus episodes, our last two bonus episodes of season two on Thursday, October 19th will be the Treehouse of horror of Babylon, the exorcist, which is the Simpsons exorcist parody. And then we are wrapping up the horror, the alien a thon on October 26th with alien covenant. And then our, Last bonus episode will be on Halloween. That'll be our two year anniversary episode. That'll be the final episode of season two before we head into season three of the horror of Babylon. And we would be probably not be making it to season three without the support of our patrons, such as Abigail, the first breaker of chains, mother of dragons, and Logan, the, the full, full metal patron, and Ben, the fourth patron, patron of, of hope, hope, and Mia the fifth, the rainmaker. She makes it rain. And thank you to Four Horsemen Comics and Gaming, which you can visit at the Morgantown Mall in Morgantown, West Virginia, or the Mall at Robinson in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You can also shop online at four, uh, shop.fourhorsemancomics.com. And I just got a text that Ronald the Third, Grampus of Christmas, has been found. He's acting a little strange. But he has been found and he's under observation. Uh, they they did d- use a rape kit on him and he's I'm probably not going to keep him. <laughs> uh, that's so fucked up. <laughs> oh, I wanted to mention this. I, I'm I'm sorry. Like, Go ahead. I know we're, we're winding down, but this bugged the hell out of me. There is no way that they would have sent those two girls home. Uh, from the hospital the same day they were found. Basically, they like, okay, you weren't sexually assaulted and you weren't drugged. You can go home. You're fine. Like, they would keep them for a couple days for observation. Probably 48 hours. Yeah, I mean, like, no way. Like, it's, They were both acting weird. Like, they didn't remember where they were. They would keep them for observation. They'd at least have, like, a day with a crisis counselor. Yeah, and they would, they would have let them see a therapist. They would have probably like questioned all the parents like, like i know american health care isn't the best but damn yeah well, it would have been better than that yeah i i i work in mental health mm-hmm. with uh and we we do have a children's unit again i'm sorry yeah me too <laughs> but i can tell you from experience that they would have done more yeah they, it would have been at least 24 hours it's usually 48 yeah but whatever okay we're done bitching about this movie sorry <laughs> yeah hopefully we'll never talk about this movie again that won't happen all right well uh th- it's one of our new benchmarks for bad movies yeah it's it's not like roar or fly bad but of like a like a real hollywood theatrical film yeah, like it's it's th- one of 30, the worst 30 million dollar mid-budget movie it's it's one of the worst if not the worst like it's mm-hmm it's the thing a lot of the things that rank below it are like not fully funded theatrical movies yeah i yeah. think i ranked this below winnie the pooh blood and honey it was very close to winnie the pooh in my ranking let me look so exercise spots above for you yeah exorcist is 74 winnie the pooh is 79 so yeah. and I, I actually i thought about ranking it under winnie the pooh and if it weren't for that like that first 30 minutes i would have yeah uh, I think that's one of the reasons why I'm so hard on this is because of what I liked in this movie. I liked so much. Yeah, there was real potential for great. It's a very Anakin Skywalker movie where it's like, you were the chosen one and then you fucked up so bad. You are supposed to revive the Exorcist <laughs> franchise, not damn it to hell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, that seems like a good thing to end on. Thank you for... Uh, watching the exorcist and talking to me about it i think i should be thanking you ryan yeah i, <laughs> I mean, should buy you more beer that's all right we're, we're good thank you to our patrons stay tuned for our socials and stay scary stay scary everybody and now for the obligatory socials please like share and subscribe you can find the podcast on twitter at horrorpod 69 you can also follow us on facebook instagram slasher and goodreads Become part of the Disturbed community by asking for the Facebook group and Discord links. Send dick pics to the Horror of Babylon podcast at gmail.com. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Horror of Babylon. In closing, you can let your friends know that the Horror of Babylon is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible and all other major podcast apps. Stay scary. Mm-hmm.